The Caribbean is home to one of the world's most complex mosaics of marine and coastal habitats. These rich ecosystems possess more than 10% of the world's coral reefs, more than 22,000 square kilometers of mangrove, over 1,400 species of fish and marine mammals, and six of the world's seven species of endangered sea turtles. Nature is the lifeblood underpinning the region's major economic engines. The Caribbean region attracts more than 60% of the world's divers to its aquatic wonders, and tourism overall provides over 6 million jobs. If we don't protect our resources now, eventually over the next uh, maybe 15, 20 years, 30 years, we won't have anything. A healthy environment underpins the economy, which is necessary for the prosperity and security of the Caribbean. The natural heritage and vibrant cultures face imminent threats from unsustainable development, overfishing, land-based and marine pollution, climate change and other global challenges. Just as ocean waters and animals move through the entire region, the entire region needs to work together in partnership to effectively manage its marine and coastal resources and safeguard the environment for future generations. Marine protected area is uh, very important uh, because in short, it's a way of uh, uh, conservation and protection of the important resources uh, of, that, um, of that area. Um, it also creates a balance between the users and ourselves who protect the area, creating livelihoods or encouraging livelihoods or alternative livelihoods for the people in the community who used to use the area before. In my opinion and many other fishermen, I think it's a very good project where you find it protects the, 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 the marine life, the different species of fish we have, which goes in those areas to spawn. Having those areas been protected, I think it would give rise and increase, or oh, it would give an increase to, to, to the supply of the, the, the jacks you call it, which we use for bait as fishermen. And um, also, as the other pelagics come around to, 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 to feed, also, on the surrounding area, the fishermen would benefit from it. So I think the community on the whole would benefit from such project. It was really critical for us in the exposure we got and the training um, because we started, we are young in MPA management. I mean, we just started our management uh, just about two years. And those training uh, projects and the projects that we did, the training opportunities, really helped in building capacity, you know, giving us the, the knowledge and so in, in managing um, our MPA more effectively. And those things were really important for us. It's good having a protected area. It's a nice thing. It's, it's a good thing for the fishermen and the community, but we have to be together on it. There is a couple of changes. I've seen more turtles in the park, bigger fishes, everything. Everything in that aspect it seemed to be good, but I think we still need some coming together between the fishermen and the marine protected area via the Ministry of Fisheries. We, we're doing some public awareness now, and you know that um, has been is accepted well in the communities that we conducting the promotion. You know, so the, the project helped to create awareness uh, nationally for the marine protected areas program. Which one do you think? It protects the fish. Well, you are correct. It is fish. Okay, so let's give our own proposal because you is correct. Also, uh, we had training um, and board effectiveness and that helped the different boards that our MPAs are managed by community stakeholder boards. We um, involve commun community participation in the management of our MPs and the training that we conducted of course helped the, the members of the board to understand clearly what what their responsibilities are and you know the whole in the whole scheme of governance of the MPA. As part of the project we are, we are implementing a, a, a project now on with various aspects of 
uh, MP uh, related activities. For example, we, we did a training for the wardens and that was a follow-up to the uh, training of trainers program where we conducted an enforcement training program uh, in Grenada for all wardens and police officers and other persons involved in the MPA and it was really a successful program so it gave them a, a real feel of what they should be doing so that was an important uh, follow-up activity of the uh, training of trainers program. But it is very important to uh, Grenada because of the the social economic benefit that it brings to Grenada. Uh, as you know that um, we depend a lot on uh, the coastal areas for our development, both in tourism and in terms of fishing. So economically it is very vital. Uh, as a matter of fact, the whole region uh, depends on the coastal marine environment for its uh, development. It has made a difference and um, because in my job every day I, we get to uh, collaborate and discuss, engage the, uh, the users and uh, because of the whole protection of, the, uh, of that particular area, uh, you're seeing, uh, the fishermen are saying that uh, there are a lot more successes in the catch, uh, there are a lot more fishes, so from the diver perspective, the dive shop owners are saying that there are a lot more fishes in the MPA, the fishermen who fishes outside the boundaries are saying that they're seeing a lot more. So in short, this, the funding from uh, those agencies uh, has really helped the uh, MPA in meeting some of its functions and, um, and some of its objectives basically. It's a beautiful dive, it's, it's like an aquarium down there, it's really really lovely, yeah yeah. Okay. It's gorgeous, oh, this is a, we've had a few dives now, I think this is one of the nicest. I would like to see that um, we lay a foundation for sustainable uh, development, that we preserve the marine environment for future generations and that we take the necessary steps, we establish the necessary mechanisms to preserve and protect the coastal and marine environment. The challenge we have now is one of uh, financing the activities to really establish those areas. If you don't have the financial resources, you know, and you have to get the fishermen on board, so that is something that we have to work on. We must have buy-in by the population, we must have buy-in by the fishermen. They must understand what we are doing and why we are doing it. I, I do think the fishermen will continue to support the MPA because it, it will be for the benefit of all fishermen. And um, what I do think should be done also, lots of PR are supposed to be, so it should be done to the people in the community, to the fishermen, to the, to the divers and everybody around. The, the, the more educated the, 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 the people, the community are about such project, project, I think it would be less effort put into it by management and also everyone would understand the purpose of the MPA, which I do think is a very good project. We have to work together. I think it's important that the Caribbean uh, on a whole come together and support one another in, in the whole effort of protecting our marine ecosystem. We cannot do it by ourselves and um, we need the support of the, the, or the key organizations and institutions that support us and the, the, the other countries, you know, I think if we work together, it would be, we, we can have a regional approach to protecting our marine ecosystem and it would make our work a lot easier. The impacts from this project contribute to achieving the visionary commitment made by the governments of Grenada, the Bahamas, the Dominican Republic, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Jamaica to protect at least 20% of the near shore marine and coastal habitats by 2020. This commitment is otherwise known as the Caribbean Challenge Initiative.